Okay, so let's do a little bit different type of example. And in this example, we are going to figure out the orders of reactants in a reaction given the general rate law and some information about what happens to the rate when we change the concentration of each reactant individually. So here is the rate law that we are going to be working with, and this is the rate law for the generalized rate law for 2A plus B goes to C. So here's our reaction. Now, we want to get these orders for each reactant. So our rate law is rate is equal to the rate constant K, and that's multiplied times the concentration of A to some power, and that's the order. So N is the order of A and then the concentration of B to some power, and uh, M is the order of B in this reaction. Now, instead of having a table of data, this time we're told some information, we're given some information about what happens to the rate when we change these concentrations individually. So, the, our first piece of information is that when we increase the concentration of A by one and a half, the rate increases by one and a half. And we are also told that when we triple the concentration of B, the rate goes up by a factor of nine with A constant. So let's go ahead and figure out the orders for each one of these reactants. So the first thing I'm going to do is write our generalized rate law here. So that's rate is equal to the rate constant concentration of A to the N power, concentration of B to the M power. And let's remember what is going to stay constant here. And one is the rate constant. So no matter what we do to those concentrations, K is going to remain the same. So we can essentially ignore it in this equation, or we can make it one or whatever we want to do. But we don't need to worry about it because it isn't going to change based on changing the concentrations of reactants. And so, let's look at changing the concentration of A first. So basically, all we need to worry about is, let's go ahead and draw a line there, um, is since B is constant, we're changing the concentration of A, we really only need to worry about A to the N power is proportional to the rate. So that's what we're going to work with to figure out this order. So we're told that when we increase the concentration of A by 1.5, then we get a rate that increases by 1.5, which is 1.5 times. So the only thing that, the only number that we can put in for n for the order of a that makes this statement true, 1.5 is equal to 1.5 to the n power, is if n is equal to 1. So anytime you see the concentration increased by some factor and the rate goes up by the same factor, that means that the reactant is first order in the reaction. Okay, so let's look at the harder one, which is B. So B is a little bit tougher. So in, in, with B, we triple the concentration, and the rate goes up by a factor of 9. So let's rewrite our rate law here. This time I'll go ahead and put in that A is now an order of 1. We still don't know B. So there we are, and we're going to remember that the rate constant stays constant, of course. A is constant in this problem, so we can ignore it. And so basically we are going to be looking at rate proportional to concentration of B to the M power. Now, the problem tells us that when we triple the concentration of B, then the rate goes up by a factor of 9. So what power could we put in for M where we would have a true statement? And so if M is 2, if B is second order, 3 squared is 9. So this tells us that 
this reaction is second order in B. So M is equal to 2. Okay, so first order in A, N equals 1. Second order in B, M equals 2. And third order overall. So let me just go ahead and finish off our rate law by putting in M is equal to 2. So just right over that. So our rate, our general rate law would be rate equals the rate constant multiplied by A to the first power because it's first order, multiplied by concentration of B to the second power because it is second order.